rating plus one nine one plus x SCP one three eight two minus one item hash SCP one three eight two object class Euclid special containment procedures SCP one three eight two is contained off site at coordinates redacted Lake Michigan SCP SC star is to remain on permanent assignment one kilometer from SCP one three eight two Posing as Michigan Shipwreck Research Associates Vessel SS Lobster Trap. Foundation operatives embedded in local Coast Guard services are to redirect air and sea traffic away from containment site. Any civilian traffic that approaches SCP-1382 is to be detained, interrogated, and administered Class B amnesiacs pending results of said interrogation. Description SCP-1382-1 is a Red Sea Mark water buoy, identical to models produced by registration matches existing model produced in 19, but no abnormal behavior was reported until July 7, 2012. SCP-1382-1 has suffered structural damage indicative of a high-speed impact, likely from a light civilian motorcraft, but is otherwise functional and intact. The Foundation was alerted to SCP-1382 after a pattern of recent missing persons reports led them to its coordinates. In dark weather or night conditions, SCP-1382-1 flashes the International Morse Code Distress Signal S -O -S. at 10-second intervals. SCP-1382-1 is anchored to SCP-1382-2 which is embedded on the seafloor at a depth of meters. SCP-1382-2 is the remains of Airlines Flight 441, a commercial passenger liner that vanished over Lake Michigan on July 2, 1973. It has suffered extensive structural damage and degradation pertinent to an uncontrolled water, landing and prolonged submersion. Contained within SCP-1382-2 are 56 instances of SCP-1382-3 skeletal human remains that are believed to be the former passengers and crew of SCP-1382-2. The remains of three reported missing persons attributed to SCP-1382-1, as well as D49581. See Incident 1382-C2. Are also contained within SCP-1382-2. The whereabouts of two passengers and two crew members from Flight 441 are currently unknown. When SCP-1382-1 becomes active, all instances of SCP-1382-3 animate, registering a temperature of 37, 0 degrees Celsius, 98, 6 degrees Fahrenheit. On thermal imaging scanners, early observation suggested that SCP-1382-3 was reliving the crash of Flight 441. The majority of 1382-3 appear distressed and assuming crash positions in their seats. Continued observation has revealed a number of discrepancies, and it is the conclusion of Dr. Salvia that the passengers were distressed by events occurring parallel to the crash and not the crash itself. Subject number 1. SCP the 1st of March 1382. Rises from the pilot's seat and appears to be fending off an unknown attacker before slumping over. 1382-2. As control panel and ceasing to move. Subject number 9 drops to its knees and holds up its arms. In a posture suggesting supplication and or prayer. Subject number 12 attempts to push his right thumb into the left eye socket of subject number 13. Seated adjacent, number 13 offers no resistance but appears to be screaming. Subject number 18 leans over the back of its chair, grabs hold of and attempts to consume the left hand of subject number 19, managing to dislodge and swallow the distal and intermediate phalanges of the index and middle fingers. Finger bones can be seen inside hash 18's ribcage. Number 19 appears to be screaming while subject number 20, seated next to it, 
Assaults number 18 with its bare fists. Subjects number 22, number 23, and number 24 are gesturing at the left side passenger windows. Their motions suggest something is on or near the wing of the plane. Subjects number 44 and number 45 overpower subjects number 46 and number 47. Both juveniles, estimated to be 8 and 6 years of age, respectively, and begin to consume them. Subjects number 53, number 54, and number 55 are identified as and reported missing during a three-month period previous to the discovery of SCP-1382. Each is in a state of decay applicable to their environment and length of time submerged. When animated, all three express confusion and distress at their surroundings and at the decayed condition of their own bodies. Subject number 56 is the remains of D49581, absorbed into SCP-1382-2 during Incident 1382-C2. It is in a very early stage of decay. Number 56 expresses confusion and distress at its surroundings, as well as greater self-awareness and none of the repeating actions demonstrated by other SCP-1382-3 S. Number 56 has made several efforts to escape SCP-1382-2. So far it has attempted to extricate itself through an open window. Communicate with nearby SCP-1382-3 S. And to run or swim to the emergency exits. Each attempt has been unsuccessful in the time allotted. Requests to contact and or remove number 56 are pending approval. After 13 seconds of activity, all instances of SCP-1382-3 turn to face SCP-1382-1. They remain in this position until SCP-1382-1 ceases its S. O. S. At which point they collapse and become inert. Plus Incident 1382-C1. Hide report. Forward. The following transcript details Dr. Salvia's attempts to establish communication with SCP-1382-1 using the Sea Star's signal light at A. Distance of 800 meters. Less than begin log. 0039 hours greater than. Dr. Salvia. Hello. SCP-1382-1. S. O. S. Dr. Salvia. Respond. There is an uncharacteristic two-minute pause before SCP-1382-1 flashes a response. SCP-1382-1. Help. Dr. Salvia. Who are you? SCP-1382-1. Mary S. O. S. Less than end log. O-103 hours greater than. Closing statement. SCP-1382-1 ceases activity at this point. Marie is believed to be Mary. A passenger aboard Flight 441. Plus Incident 1382-C2. Hide report. Interviewed. D-49581, chosen for his knowledge of boating and international Morse code. Interviewer, Dr. Salvia, aboard the SCPSC Star. Forward, D-49581 was instructed to board a rubber dinghy and approach SCP-1382-1. Weather conditions nominal. Log begins at 2,217 hours. When D-49581 was within 100 meters of SCP-1382-1, less than begin log, 2,217 hours greater than D-49581. Hey Doc, can you read me? Dr. Salvia, loud and clear, D-49581. Report your status, D-49581. I can see the boy. No people though. Are you sure there's someone out here? Dr. Salvia. Proceed as directed. D-49581. D-49581. Fine. Fine. Hello. Anyone home? D-49581 raises his signal flashlight and flashes, hello, from his light. 
SCP-1382-1 does not respond. Dr. Salvia, continue transmitting. D-49581. D-49581 continues flashing the prepared signal. Here to help K. Quote, Dr. Salvia, any response? D-49581. SCP-1382-1 begins a new signal. Translated later as, hunger. Quote, D-49581. What the hell? Less than end log. 2,222 hours greater than. Closing statement. A sudden siege wave, estimated to be 3 meters tall, surges up between SCP-1382-1 and the dinghy. Contact with D-49581 lost on impact. SCP-1382-1 ceases activity. A search of the area reveals D-49581's signal flashlight and fragments of his chest-mounted camera. But no other debris. Plus Incident 1382-C3. Hide report. Forward. 32 hours after our Incident 1382-C2. Dr. Salvia attempts to re-engage Morse code communication with SCP-1382-1. Less than begin log. 2320 hours greater than. SCP-1382-1. S. O. S. Dr. Salvia. Hello. SCP-1382-1. Without pause. Help. Dr. Salvia. How? SCP-1382-1. S. O. S. Dr. Salvia. Are you Mary? SCP-1382-1. S. O. S. Dr. Salvia. What are you? SCP-1382-1. S. O. S. Dr. Salvia, is with you, is the real name of D-49581. Almost five minutes pass before SCP-1382-1 replies. SCP-1382-1. Hunger. Dr. Salvia, where is? SCP-1382-1. Hunger S. O. S. Less than end log. 2,351 hours greater than.